have it in a mix of languages, right? Yes, yes, correct, correct. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on timely medical intervention organized by Tolani Maritime Institute. I hope all of you are fit, fine, and healthy. For this webinar, we are very happy to have Dr. Sujata Naik Tolani, Chairperson, Tolani Group, Mr. R. Kumar, Managing Director, PSCL, Principals of TMI, TCC, and Chaitanya International School, fellow teachers, office staff, and some students. Friends, for the past 23 months, since the outbreak of this coronavirus pandemic, the entire world has experienced several challenges at personal and professional levels. This virus has brought mighty economies and so-called developed countries on their knees. This situation has been very catastrophic in developing countries like India. Many of us have personally suffered due to this virus and probably lost our near and dear ones in the first, second or third wave. All of us have been living in constant state of confusion, misconception and threat. Oximeters and thermometers have become very common tools in our household. Many of us are obsessed with these equipment and keep taking help of these tools every now and then. And therefore, to get, get rid of some misconceptions, we have invited an expert to guide us what to do, what not to do in these kind of situations. Before I invite Dr. Sujata Naik Tolani to introduce our guest speaker, I'd like to inform all the participants that you will have the opportunity to submit your text questions in Q&A section today. You may send your queries at any time during this presentation. The presenter will address them during the Q&A section at the end of the presentation. Now, may I request Dr. Sujata Naik Tulani to introduce the guest speaker? Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. So a very good afternoon to Dr. Prachi Sate and all of you who have gathered here today to hear some words of wisdom on a topic that is relevant and important to each one of us here. I don't think anyone is spared on, on this point. Uh, as Rahul said, yes, we have had the last two and a half years being challenging. But in addition to that, in addition to that, even without the COVID, we as individuals and human beings are constantly faced with situations where you know, we are not in the peak of health. Uh, in the in the pink of health and often there is a you know a question in our mind about whether we should seek medical intervention right away or is it okay to wait till tomorrow or okay to wait for another week i think this is a very important topic for all of us to understand so that we make the right decisions because there are times where minutes matter where hours matter and it is important to make timely decisions to, so that you know, morbidity and mortality doesn't overcome us. It is indeed an honor to have with us today and to introduce Dr. Prachi Sate. The year was 1999. The month was November. That is about 22 years ago. For those of you who were associated with the Tolanis back then, I am sure this timeline holds some terrifying memories. From my perspective, in 1998, I had completed a very rigorous training in the US in critical care medicine and had been a practicing and had been practicing in New York as an intensivist in Lehman Stearns, a doctor who works and runs the ICU, the, the critical care units. And I'd been doing that for over a year. November 99, I rushed back to India to a doctor, N.P. Tolani, who was holding on to his life by a thread. By some divine intervention, he had been delivered into the hands of this young, budding lady intensivist in Pune at Ruby Hall Clinic, who was running this relatively large ICU. 
meaning she was my contemporary in some ways, but of course, many years senior to me. I think so, Prachi. I'm not sure, but I think I think so. Oh no, not that big. Just, <laughs> okay. just contemporary. Yeah. Okay. You can imagine how skeptical I must have been, having a deep understanding of how critical the situation was. But what I witnessed in the ICU at Ruby Hall Clinic in, the, in those days was nothing short of the best. Dr. Sate was running a world-class ICU. Mind you, this was 22 years ago. And I know that I was definitely well qualified to vouch for this. The rest, of course, is history. Dr. Sate is the director of the Department of Critical Care Medicine, Ruby Hall Clinic, Pune, and a professor at D.Y. Patel Medical College of, of Critical Care Medicine, a professor of critical care medicine. Having completed her MBBS and MD from Pune and FRCP from London, she completed an international fellowship from Royal College of Physicians, Edinburgh, for comprehensive training in critical care medicine in 1991. Returning to India, she set up, she was the founder, she set up the ICU at Ruby Hall Clinic, which today is a 55 bedded ICU. Today, she is professionally at, at very high standing in India, is a recipient of many awards and academically very active, training hundreds of young budding doctors, and above all, saving lives of thousands of patients. She has been responsible for numerous innovative in initiatives. But above all, as far as I'm concerned, and many of us, she was very instrumental in giving us 18 more years of Dr. Tolani after his horrific accident. Today, we are here to hear from her a few words of wisdom, which will probably make us all better understand when we should seek medical help, when is the right time to do that, so that we can keep ourselves and our families healthy and safe for a long, long time. So thank you for being here, Prachi. It is really an honor. I am so happy to have you here today addressing our team at Tolani's and uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sujata, for such kind words. I still remember, I, I never thought it was 22 years ago, but it has been a long time since we've got introduced to each other. And I'm so glad that me and my team could contribute to the future of Maritime Institute since then. Thank you. In real words. So it has been my passion always to talk to general public about the importance of timely intervention. So I wholeheartedly accepted your invitation to come and talk to all the group involved in Tolani family and various endeavors. So I'm really glad to be here with all of you. I would just like to share my screen and then start the talk. Is that visible? Yes. Right. So just now, Mr. Rahul mentioned about COVID and what we have gone through was a bad dream and it was real bad for all the healthcare workers. And the world came to know about the importance of critical care or intensive care or acute care. In other words, we can say people were really running from pillar to post to find out a good ICU bed during those times. So it is really very important that all of us intensivists, people didn't even know this word, isn't it, Sujata? Yes, that there absolutely. is some such <laughs> kind of speciality. Now it has come to forefront and how it is helpful in saving lives. So saving lives, as you can see in this picture, can be on some TV series we could have seen, like flying doctors and all, but it is in real life that the doctors and the right timely interventions can save lives. So as you mentioned, I'm going to talk for next few minutes about timely medical care practices, which can help, which can really help save lives. I'll not go towards COVID today, 
It is too much. All of us have talked about it and heard about it. But there is life other than COVID as well. And let us find out how we can do the best to get timely help from the medical care. So a human being is a very funny organism, isn't it? And we observe many conflicts and many controversies in our behavior. So let us find out what exactly these are. And I'll ask Rahul to run a short poll for all of us so that quickly we will come to know about what is in our mind before we start going towards our topic for today. Over to you, Rahul. So how many of us want to live longer? Please answer yes or no. Yeah, and let us be very quick in our responses so that we can go further. Well, there are a few people who don't want to live longer, apparently. <laughs> All right, so can we go to the next question? How many of us, sorry, the second question? So how many of us want to take help of medical care to live longer? Please answer. Oh, the arm with no is extending. Right. So there is a 50-50 or rather 45-50-55. Okay. Okay. Right. So the next question, please. So people who don't want to take help of medical care, I'm sure they want to be self-dependent, Atmanirbhar for their own health. And that's a very good news. How many of us are scared of death? Oh, that is quite heartening to see that many of us are not scared of death. Well, it is true that death is a part of our life or the life on earth. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay, the next question. There are these few questions which I have posed for our own introspection. Next. How many of us have made provisions for emergency medical treatment? For example, savings or medical insurance. We always keep money aside for the education of the son if son is born in the family. We always keep money aside for a daughter's wedding if the daughter is born in the family, isn't it? But how many of us keep money aside for our own health? That's good. I'm quite happy to see that many of us are very responsible people. Next question, please. How many of us watch daily diet and exercise and deal with stress management? It is as good as having medical insurance, you know, all of you understand. It is more important than having medical insurance to have proper control on our own day-to-day -day life and lifestyle. Great. I must say, Sujata, I'm impressed with this lot of people. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Next, please. Yeah, just one more question, I suppose. How many of us feel that once we are sick, the doctor is responsible for our health outcome? Most of the times we find that patients totally hold 
doctor responsible for their survival or non-survival. But again, I feel that people in this group are very wise and very mature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the doctors don't have to fear here, isn't it? The next one, I think the last one. How many of us feel that once we are naive, this is done, the next one? Right, now this is a very important question. How many of us feel that ICUs can save lives? Well, so yes and no. And I think both the answers are correct. But if it is reached in time, and if underlying disease is reversible, the ICUs can definitely help save lives. And that we have just heard during this introduction made by Dr. Sujata, isn't it? I think let us stop this poll over here and go back to deliberations. So human being is a funny organism, as I mentioned. And then, what is the fun is that we want to live longer and use medical health to get better. But many of us are scared of death. We don't want to, we just don't want to die. We just don't want our loved ones to die, isn't it? But there is a denial to accept the illness and seek timely care. And that is definitely observed in all socioeconomic strata. We want to have best of the care, but do not want to spend for it. That is very true in Indian scenario, isn't it? So we have to resolve in our own mind and we have to make provisions for it. We do not understand that like medical insurance, timely health checks, daily exercise, diet and stress management is important. And once we are sick, we hold the doctor responsible for the negative outcome. And in India, we beat up the doctor. So that is not the way. And I'm really happy to be here with this group who is very mature and very, very um, uh, balanced and responsible. We do not understand that ICUs are there to help us and we have to seek help in time. Then the ICUs can be the best. Well, let us just talk about the statistics of causes of death in India. As you can see here, it's a visual impression that how heart and circulatory disorders make the largest of it. Then the cancers, the cancers have come as the second, um, second largest group, respiratory disorders, nervous system disorders, but none of them are devoid of probable death or probable morbidity or affecting the quality of life. For example, diabetes or various types of infections and simple things as transport accidents where India is one of the topmost countries. Not only that, even pregnancy and birth related injuries and deaths are also high in our country. So with all this, don't you think we have to think to our own mind how we can all prevent this and how we can all treat this? In younger age group, when it is analyzed, can you imagine that suicide can be one of the first number one cause of death? And it is very important that all of us keep talking to each other. And if somebody is saying that I will, it is uh, expressing negative thoughts, should not neglect it, should be watchful for taking the person out of that. This is especially true in younger age group. But in a younger age group, injuries, accidents, and even cardiovascular diseases are increasing. So we have to remember that none of the age groups are devoid of threats and such situations. And the baseline uh, causes, which in fact we invite with our own health hands is basically tobacco, being overweight and obesity, accidents, and infectious diseases. So most of the these things, most of these things can be avoided. And that is what we have to remember. But if anything out of this actually happens, we should seek medical help immediately. Analysis of the causes of lifestyle related diseases and cancers also can tell us the same thing that these things should be prevented. So coming to the other part of it, that health expenditure per person, if we try and take out the world statistics, 
you can see over here that country like Brazil and Russia is having more provisions to spend for health, whereas India, it is minuscule. And you can see even public spending is minuscule out of that. And still 70% of people in India have to spend out of their own pockets. So taking all these things into our consideration, we have to think how to prevent the serious illnesses. And if at all, there are any signs and symptoms how we should go ahead and what we should do. I think it was not nice to talk about death and death related things right at the beginning of this talk, but I think that was most important to get the perspective. But still life is beautiful. So let us come back to the beautiful life on earth. And then the management of emergencies becomes an integral part of any society, any primary care, any hospital, any healthcare. So what are these things? So many different things you will hear. Are kal parenta ta changla hota, achanak kai zhalo. Ho, da mea ta azar hota, par mait nahi, ek diu saat kasa kharaab zhala. So all these things, you know, we can come across and we hear from people. Garat lea garat pad lea, paaya cha, mandi cha, heart fracture zhala, hospital madhi gila, ane don diu saat gila. So all these things are very important for all of us to understand that, that there is a potential for early correct treatment and prevention in early stages of diseases because it gives us very short time in case of emergency. You must have seen in case of emergency, break the glass. These are the notices everywhere. And then what is to be done after that? And that is what all of us have to understand. Baltimore law in America, there is an Adam Scholey Institute. There is a golden hour in the first place. There is a golden hour in the first place. So, 60 precious minutes concept by Adam Scholey. So, in which he mentioned that time is life. And if you are critically injured, you have less than 60 minutes to survive. You might not die right then. It may be after a few days. But something has happened in your body that is irreparable if it is not reversed within the first hour. So there is a golden hour between life and death. And that is what we will try to understand. What are the common medical emergencies encountered in general practice? Asa ek survey kela gila hota ki kasha sa te lo kale baba tum cha kade kai zala manun ale chakkar ale chakkar yon padle ki maak shanabar ve shuddha zale. किंवा झोपून उठल्या उठल्या ब्लड प्रेशर ड्रॉप झालं ऑर्थोस्टॅटिक हायपोटेन्शियल म्हणून चक्कर आली एखाद्या औषधाची रिॲक्शन आली किंवा दम्याचा अटॅक आला आणि खूप दम लागायला लागला खूप जास्त ताप चढला शुगर खूप कमी किंवा जास्त झाली फॉरेन बॉडी ऍस्पिरेशन आपल्याला माहिती आहे लहान मुलं काहीतरी दाणा खातात किंवा पैशाचं नाणं खातात आणि कुठे छातीत अडकत सिजर्स म्हणजे फिट्स किंवा फेफरं येणं जे म्हणतो आपण heart related problems and other medical emergencies so he commonest karan ahet ja sathi ekadi vyakti general practitioner kade jate ani mag fatafat kadi kadi pudhe hospital paryanta nyava lagta asha such asha ghatana kadi kadi na sangta yetat so all of us have to be prepared to handle the emergencies and be clear in your mind that basic life support certification can be done by all of us even the lay public. So even in the institutes like yours, there can be certain people who are trained in basic life support and there should be equipment for basic life support available in all the institutions. There should be one medical emergency room available there. Be certified in advanced cardiac life support also is quite possible. In your own location, you have to be able to get an emergency equipment, you have to be able to get an emergency room. Know your patient. When you are working with your colleagues, you know somebody has some disease or somebody has certain problems. So be aware, be a buddy, be a good buddy. And when something happens wrong or goes wrong, you should have a drill that you can do in your own institution. So react to possible emergencies very, very promptly. Syncope means chakkarena, giddiness. Maybe you just stand up from the floor or from the chair and you feel loss of balance or somebody can actually fall on the floor 
but whether that person has actually has had cardiac arrest or just giddiness we don't know so we have to learn certain things and which will come across to in next few slides so chakkar yena he is the commonest ahe khup upas tapas kele kiwa jhop jhali nahi pravas kela kai ulta jhala julab jhale dehydration jhala so typically people present with episode of giddiness so which is a most common emergency almost 30% of adults can face it sometime or the other aplyala maithe pushkala 26 january kiwa 15 august se karyakram asat parade madhe ubha raila raila pan lokana chakkar yete so asha yacha madhe chakkar ka yete so during that time there is reduced blood supply to the brain so what is the most important thing that you need to do make the person lie down on the floor so that the blood circulation to the brain is reestablished again but it is not very simple because syncope can be or giddiness can be a pre disposing or pre presenting feature to various thing it could be just psychological like anxiety or it can be hyperventilation syndrome mele kon tari khub zor zorat shwas gete ghabarlya mule tari sudha asa hu shakta but neither actual heart attack sugar low na chakkar yena fit yena या सगळ्या गोष्टींमधून किंवा इम्पेंडिंग ब्रेन स्ट्रोक या सगळ्याचं मॅनिफेस्टेशन चक्कर येणं हे असू शकतं सो इफ समबडी हॅज अ सिग्निफिकंट गिडीनेस इट शुड नेव्हर बी निग्लेक्टेड इट हॅज टू बी प्रॉपरली अनलाइज कधी कधी चक्कर येण्याच्या आधीची सिम्टम्स पण आपल्याला लक्षात घ्यायला हवेत सिव्हिअर नॉशिया उलटी सारखं वाटणं एकदम गरम वाटणं घाम फुटणं डोळ्यापुढे अंधार येणं हार्ट रेट खूप फास्ट किंवा खूप कमी होणं अशा सगळ्या गोष्टींवरती आपण लक्ष ठेवायला पाहिजे वेदर दॅट पर्सन इज हॅव्हिंग ओनली सायकोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लेम ऑर देर इज सम अंडरलाईन प्रॉब्लेम अँड ऍज यू कॅन सी ओव्हर हिअर लेग्स शुड बी एलिव्हेटेड यू कॅन डू दॅट इव्हन वेन समबडी इज लाईंग ऑन द फ्लोअर सो बाय दिस द ब्लड सर्क्युलेशन टुवर्ड्स द ब्रेन अँड द हार्ट इम्प्रूव्ह सो दिस इज कॉल्ड ॲज ट्रेंडल इन बर्क पोझिशन सो वी ऑल हॅव टू रिमेंबर इन सच सिच्युएशन वॉट इज टू बी डन in such situations we should also be able to make the person smell apan kandya cha avaz deto ki nahi ammonia smell and then suddenly the brain can wake up par neither aplyala oxygen sudha dyal lagu shakto apan aplyala kay kay equipment available thevayal pahije aplya institute madhe tyacha baddal sudha boluya there should be a team of emergency medical people or people who are trained in bls around in the institution and there should be always a few cupboards at various places which will contain emergency equipment or emergency drug chakkar yun koni tari padla ta apan kay baghala pahije pulse nadi se thoke mosta yena he apan saglyani shikala pahije we know that we can check it on our hand or near the wrist but other than that you can also check it on your feet you can if it is not palpable on the peripheries of our limbs then we can check it what is called as carotid आपल्या गळ्या गळ्याला जेव्हा आपल्या श्वासनलिकेच्या बाजूला आपण हात लावतो तर आपल्याला एक महत्वाची रक्तवाहिनी पल्सिटिंग दिसते सो वी शुड बी एबल टू चेक दॅट ऑल्सो ऑल ऑफ अस शुड लर्न मेजरिंग इट ऍज इट वॉज मेन्शन अर्लियर नाव ऑल ऑफ अस नो हाऊ टू युज द पल्स ऑक्सिमीटर ऍज वेल विच इज अ बोन अँड वी शुड हॅव मेनी मल्टिपल पल्स ऑक्सिमीटर अवेलेबल अँड वी शुड बी एबल टू चेक द पल्स रेट अँड द ऑक्सिजन लेवल्स काय काय वेळेला असं होतं की देर आर नोन अस्थमॅटिक पीपल किंवा कोणाला तरी श्वास लागतोय न्यूमोनिया किंवा इन्फेक्शन झालेलं आहे अँड दॅट पर्सन इज जस्ट अनेबल टू ब्रीद अँड ही इज चोकिंग सो ड्युरिंग सच अस्थमा अटॅक वी शुड बी एबल टू ट्रीट अ पर्सन ऑन द साईट बाय पोझिशनिंग द पेशंट अपराईट युझिंग अ ब्रॉम्फोडायलेटर इनहेलर यू आर ऑल अवेअर ऑफ दिस टाईप ऑफ इनहेलर्स अँड द डिव्हायसेस लाईक दिस विच आर कॉल्ड ॲज स्पेसर्स ऑर द नेब्युलायझर्स and these are simple equipment which we can make available in our own institution and train certain personnel about how to use it asthma can be get can get precipitated because of simple things like dust kima ranga kam challa sel to that ranga se vaas to strong people who are sensitive to that can develop asthmatic attack so this concept of golden hours is applicable to various conditions like trauma myocardial infarction that means heart attack stroke stroke manje apan paralysis cha attack manto na brain la rakta purvathya madhe adthala yena ani sepsis manje kay ta sharirat ekhada infection hona severe pain uh, severe uh, taap yena ani infection sagya sharirat pasarna kiwa apan manto vishbhint infection sa vish sharirat bhint 
so if there is severe infection also in all these conditions there is a great importance of golden hour management mentioned in large body of evidence in all medical journals and textbooks so we will just go through all of this in short quickly as you can see here if there is a severe accident or trauma then there is a trimodal death distribution जर खूप मेजर इंजुरी असेल तर लगेचच्या लगेच एक तासाच्या आतच माणूस दगावू शकतो बट अदरवाइज विद इन अन आवर देर इज अ सेकंड पीक विद इन द सेकंड आवर देर इज अप टू टू आवर्स देर आर अर्ली डेथ अँड देन देर आर डिलेड डेथ सो आवर गोल ऑफ द होल हेल्थ सिस्टम अँड द सोशल सिस्टम इज टू अवॉइड दीज डेथ विच अकर इन लेस दॅन टू आवर्स so there can be a lot of reasons there are certain medical terminologies mentioned over here which you may not understand but then we teach all this to even our nurses and junior doctors and emergency medical doctors and we try to tell them how to look for them and that is a primary survey apply the koni tari zar ka khelatana injury jali uncha varun padla kiwa vehicle accident jala तर आपण सगळ्यांनी काय बघितलं पाहिजे सो देर इज अ प्रायमरी सर्व्हे इन विच यू सी हाऊ द पेशंट इज ब्रिथिंग वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टंट थिंग्स इज सर्वायकल स्पाईन एज यू नो इफ देर इज अ हेड इंजुरी असोसिएटेड सर्वायकल स्पाईन इंजुरी इज ऑल्सो व्हेरी व्हेरी लाईकली सो वाईल शिफ्टिंग दिस पेशंट ऑल ऑफ अस हॅव टू बी व्हेरी केअरफुल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड अप्लाय अ कॉलर टू द नेक सो दॅट द नेक डज अन मूव्ह इन रॉंग वे बिकॉज दॅट कॅन लीड टू लाईफ टाईम लॉस ऑफ पॉवर in both the all four limbs and even the respiration so we should have a cervical spine collar available in all the institutions we should watch for breathing and ventilation if required we can even give artificial ventilation to these patients bedside or even on the floor circulation we have to watch for peripheral pulses or whether the patient is becoming cold if there is any obvious bleeding we should tie a tourniquet to avoid bleeding or stop for the bleeding or give lot of pressure to the site from where the bleeding is occurring if it is external bleeding we should always look for any disability of patient is unable to move one hand or unable to speak so neurological status we need to understand and make highlight of an exposure and environment control suppose somebody has gone into a swimming pool and got a heart attack so you have to first of all get the patient out and put on the floor and assess what is happening so why all these things are important i know certain institutes may be away from um, tertiary hospitals so in such situations or when you call for an ambulance a responsible person should be able to communicate with the medical person who is going to come and attend to your patient uh okay i'm not going to go in all the details but there can be certain life threatening chest problems or lung problems which will lead a person towards death so while treating these we must see to it that the patient gets enough oxygen and we can have not necessarily oxygen cylinders even oxygen concentrators available at various locations there can be blood in the brain because of blunt trauma to the brain and that reminds me of the story which you heard at the beginning and this is highly respectable grand old man of shipping and maritime institute who actually made it good for 22 years after having something like this and it was as trivial fall as it can happen from a very small height and he was on blood thinning agents like ecosprin which are common place and maybe because of that there was a collection of blood inside the brain luckily he reached us within the golden hour he was observed very closely and there was a surgery to remove the clot and rest is the history as you know he had fruitful 18 years after the life threatening accident he had and only because of timely medical help so all of us have to remember to take timely medical help what do we do when the patient reaches we assess the patient of trauma for all those points which i have already told you before but in addition to that we also do ultrasonic examination we do scans of the brain we do x rays of the chest abdominal ultrasounds and then we try and resuscitate the patient what do we mean by resuscitation when ekhadya life 
गेलेलं आहे शरीरातून ते परत आणण्यासाठी ज्या फास्ट ऍक्शन घेतल्या जातात त्याला रिसिटेशन म्हणतात सो सलाईन तुम्हाला माहितीच आहे ब्लड प्रेशर नॉर्मल ठेवण्यासाठी दिली जाणारी औषधं ऑक्सिजन कृत्रिम श्वासोच्छ्वास सो या सगळ्या गोष्टी इन्स्टिट्यूशन मध्ये एखाद्या मेडिकल इन्स्टिट्यूशन मध्ये केल्या जातात ब्लड द्यायचं का आय व्ही सलाईन फक्त पुरेसं आहे सो इन ऑल दिस इट इज एक्स्ट्रीमली इम्पॉर्टंट दॅट द पर्सन रिचेस द राईट मेडिकल फॅसिलिटी फास्ट and remember none of the medical practitioner can deny the emergency treatment at least in initial phase he or she has to stabilize the patient and then send forward to a tertiary or high level medical institution but during all this we have to remember the caretaker has to take care of himself or herself too let me tell you a story real to- story we had this gentleman 68 years old male with diabetes sakale 8 आठ वाजता ते चालत चालत मार्केटमध्ये गेले भाजी आणायला आणि जेव्हा दहा मिनिटात भाजीवाल्या समोर उभा असताना त्यांना जाणवलं दॅट डावा हात त्यांचा हलत नव्हता आणि डाव्या पायात मुंग्याला लागल्या होत्या ही कुड नॉट स्पीक प्रॉपरली ट्राय टू स्पीक पण लखिली त्यांनी शेजारच्या माणसाला अवेअर केलं की काहीतरी मला होत आहे आणि इट इज सो ग्रेट टू ऑब्झर्व्ह द हेल्पफुल पर्सन विद इन फाईव्ह मिनिट्स हिज रिलेटिव वेअर कॉन्टॅक्टेड and they were aware about the situation of the patient ambulance was called for which arrived in 20 minutes and this gentleman was brought to us now what is happening over here all of us have to be very much aware of all these signs which help us for identification of stroke so is face looking uneven chehra vidavakda chalay ka ekhata haat uchlat nahi hai ka bolnat farak padlay ka ya sagya goshti केअरफुली वॉच करून आपण आधीच लक्षात घेतलं पाहिजे की देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ स्ट्रोक ऑर ब्रेन अटॅक इन अदर वर्ड अँड दीज पेशंट इफ दे रीच हॉस्पिटल इन टाइम कॅन ऍक्च्युली गेट सेव्हड फ्रॉम लाईफ लॉंग पॅरालिसिस सो ऑल द इन्स्टिट्यूशन विच आर वर्किंग एट इंटरनॅशनल स्टँडर्ड हॅव स्टँडर्ड प्रोटोकॉल्स विच आर ऍप्लिकेबल टू क्रिटिकल केअर ऑफ स्ट्रोक सो दॅट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड ॲज stroke code so as soon as the patient reaches what we do we do very fast history taking the barobar alela manasala aplya nate vaike chi medical history pan mahit pahije ki blood pressure hota ka adhi kay jhalo hota dokala mar lagla hota ka diabetes hota ka aushadha kay hoti so it is important for all of us to learn to keep our medical records in place emergency kadhi sangun yet nahi tyamule aplyala saglyanna mahiti pahije ki apli medical history apan kuthe tari livun thevli pahije फोनवर ठेवली पाहिजे क्लाउडवर ठेवली पाहिजे आणि आपल्या सगळ्या जवळच्या लोकांना त्याची माहिती असली पाहिजे सो वॉट इज रिकमेंडेड इफ अ पेशंट कम्स टू अस विथ इम्पेंडिंग स्ट्रोक विथ इन टेन मिनिट्स ऑफ अरायवल देर शुड बी अ स्ट्रोक टीम विच इज अव्हेलेबल ऍज इमर्जन्सी फिजिशियन अँड इव्हन द न्युरोलॉजिस्ट अँड गेट अन अर्जन्ट सिटी स्कॅन सो सिटी स्कॅन शुड बी डन विद इन ट्वेंटी फाईव्ह मिनिट्स ऑफ अरायवल within 45 minutes of ed ed arrival there has to be proper interpretation of ct nusta ekada investigation karun upyog nahi tacha artha kay ani tachyavar upachar kay he kalla pahije so that expert has to be available and if the patient is reaching within 1 hour of hospital arrival and within 3 hours from the onset of symptoms then we can actually give medicines to dissolve the clot that is happening inside the brain you have seen the patients who have moved around or lost the quality of life because of loss of power in one side of their body and you can imagine how important it is to reverse it so even up to 3 hours to 4.5 hours we can reverse this by giving certain medications which are fully available in india and you can see over here in our casualty the patient arrived at 8:40 stroke code activated stroke team arrived at 9 am patient was in imaging ct scan and then all of us are aware that time is brain if we don't waste time we can save the brain per minute of ischemia the following are destroyed 1.9 million neurons sir ek minute blood circulation thamla na brain sir the zawar zawar 2 million neurons dead hota you can imagine so how much it can be dreadful an average stroke after 10 hours man age is 30 years so you have lost 30 years of your life so you imagine how important it is to save life at early time early interval 
So in this, this particular patient was found to have a major blood circulation problem in, on the right side of his brain. And then he was given the life-saving medication to reverse the stroke. So symptom to door interval was 30 minutes, door to physician, seven minutes, door to imaging, 22 minutes, door to needle, 35 minutes when the blood clot dissolving medicine was given to him. So this was a successful example of this patient who walked home after three days with no neurological deficit. So it is such a great thing which keeps all of us medical practitioners going because of job satisfaction that we get. Similarly, there is a concept of golden hour in heart attack. So we know heart attack is what happens the blood supply is closed, the blood supply is closed. So, all of us have to say angiography, angioplasty, blah, 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 to a well-equipped hospital for complete diagnosis and proper treatment. So all this staircase, diagnostic staircase, has to be very, very fast. These days, we can even do thrombolysis in the ambulance. Wow. With telemedicine, there are so many advantages. COVID has taught us telemedicine also and acceptance of telemedicine also. So sitting at my hospital or my ICU, I can guide a doctor who is in the ambulance about what is to be done for a patient in the ambulance because the time is heart muscle over here. So all these things can be useful only and only if we reach in time. But you can see here in Indian, sir, one of the Indian surveys, how it had shown it is quite a few days, years ago. Now the situation has improved quite a lot. But how many hours are spent before the right medical thing is right medical uh, effort is done but yacha madhe aplya sagyancha hi tevdhaach vata hai na creating awareness is so important but aplya kade kase kasha sati bara doctor sangat asel doctor la sat paise kam vai che still hospital la paise kam vai che still but most of the times it is really being done according to international protocols. So please remember, we have to have our awareness levels also because we should not be in the denial mode. We should not be in a non-acceptance mode. We have to have early recognition. So after 12 hours, Already the window of opportunity has gone completely. So it is important that we take help of medical uh, system early. And what is important is yearly checks. Don't be suspicious that yearly checks are told to make money. It is not true. Yearly checks or six monthly checks are very important for us to get awareness about our own health. Same thing is true about diabetes. Diabetes can kill immediately or diabetes can kill over the years. But it is definitely not a disease to be neglected because hyperglycemia can lead to emergencies which can take you to ICU. But sometimes it can be so slow and we realize it only when the kidney has failed or the stroke has come or the heart attack has occurred. So it is very important. Hypoglycemia is even worse because hypoglycemia can just drop the patient unconscious if sugar levels go below 70. So it is very important to be aware of these things. We also have to be aware about acute bleeding. Halli pushpa patients, blood thinners for the astat, drugs like ecosprain or even ad advanced blood thinners are there. One patient came to me the other day who was noticed to have three fainting attacks since morning. And when he came there, even after asking a lot of questions, he would deny everything, any, any history. And then one of the doctors kept on asking him about the color of the stool he was passing. And then he admitted that last few days he has been passing black color stool, dark stool. And that is where he was losing blood in the body. So antiplatelet or anticoagulation drugs can sometimes precipitate chronic blood loss, which ultimately can lead to syncope or giddiness or unconsciousness okay so that needs to be 
treated with so be aware to be watchful for unexpected small bleed also and then of course we all of us know about the cardiac arrest cardiac arrest can actually occur we know that but there are so many experiments now and so many things known the scientific evidence is there that if we give a good quality cpr in basic life support it can save life there was a world renowned boxer who was going on his morning walk and he was called by the crowd to come and help resuscitate a patient who had had a fall during his morning jog so this gentleman went there and he with all his might started giving cardiac massage and also gave a good thump on the chest of that patient and that patient actually recovered this gentleman said i have seen patients losing consciousness because of my thump this is for the first time i have seen somebody coming around and improving after my thump so the right thump and right cardiac massage actually can save life so all of us can learn these techniques so when somebody falls unconscious make sure that environment is safe and the rescuers and victims both are safe check for cardiac arrest check for responsiveness first of all you have to thump uh, or tap on the cheek of the patient and ask how you are if there is no response you know that something is going wrong if there is breathing there effort there or no or there is a gasping or labored breathing you try and find out pulse within 10 seconds so if you don't find anything of that you really have to take a serious cognizance to all that and then cpr and the first aid we have to learn and start using apan pushkar da pehle automated external defibrillators you can find them on airports or important with auto instructions there so important thing is that we all should learn this youtube there are lots of youtube videos available or we can make even a training course for the team on site if you are alone with no mobile phone then leave the victim to activate the emergency response otherwise send someone to begin cpr immediately and use the aed as soon as it is available in case of unwitnessed collapse of children or infant give cpr for 2 minutes before leaving the victim so in various situations you have to learn the techniques and the chest compression should be given at the center remember heart is not on the left side in the chest it is right below our sternum so give the compressions in the ratio of 30 compressions and two artificial breaths so you would see all these things on youtube beautiful videos are available and you can learn how to give cardiac massage how to hold your hands on the sternum of the patient and how to give safe cardiac massage and it is the the acronym is cab circulation airway and breathing so we have to start with cardiac compressions first then try and make the airway position the neck position should be made in such a fashion that the airway remains open and if the patient is not breathing you can give mouth to mouth ventilation with current times if we find it to be very uh, unsafe then we can use certain masks to give mouth to mouth ventilation but what is important is intermittent drills to practice the emergency situations are important because otherwise we forget about it so in the office or any organization there should be a group of people who can handle the emergencies and then such type of pocket masks are available which you can keep available handy and you can use this by non returning valve so you can give a good respiration to the victim and this is what is showing you how to hold the neck and how to give the position it is called as head tilt and chin lift maneuver with a jaw thrust you can use such type of devices to give artificial ventilation artificial breath to a patient so there are certain protocols i don't think i'll go in all the details but if you are using aed huh, automatic defibrillator then these are the positions where we should apply the pads of the defibrillator as soon as you apply the defibrillators you will also know what is the rhythm how is the heart working and you can actually take a photo and send it to the doctor also and if this type of various graphs will come so in summary have emergency equipment readily available office personnel should know where the emergency equipment is consider practice scenarios and bls protocols 
have changed to CAD that we have to remember. When in doubt, administer O2 oxygen, and you should have oxygen concentrators available. When in doubt, get an appropriate medical consultation on video consultation. It is a good idea to recommend medical follow-up. Ekada event gadla, ani to patient bara zala. The kai ne kai zala na hota, samal sodun dayse nahi. You should do a proper medical checkup following the event. So, what is the various equipment which we can make available even at the remote sites? The simple oxygen cannula and oxygen masks. Pulse oximeter has become now available and known to everyone. These are the oxygen concentrators. And simple monitors also can be made available. But there are more than jewelry. I think people are using wearable devices nowadays. But they should not be just as a jewelry. They should actually be utilized to monitor the patients. And that can be conveyed to a doctor. A simple devices on phone also, you can actually use certain apps to take an ECG, basic ECG. So all these things can be utilized in current times very, very wisely to monitor the patient and keep a watch till the patient reaches a good medical facility. And certain things can be made available as I had mentioned it to you, inhalers with spacers, nebulizers, glucometers, and certain emergency injections at the site. But there is no answer to this from where am I going to get so much money at the 11th hour? So as much as it is important to be aware of medical conditions, it is equally important to be prepared either in terms of medical insurance or in terms of having your own liquid savings. This last point I would like to mention is about sepsis, a golden hour in sepsis. Sepsis means what? Sepsis means any infection, may it be malaria, dengue, may it be influenza, may it be COVID or any diabetic infection anywhere in the body. If it spreads beyond certain limit, it affects the whole of the body and all the organs in the body. And then that can become a life-threatening situation. So it is our job to find it out in early stages that the patient is likely, likely to get into overwhelming infection in the body. Because if you see over here, this is an Indian survey which has shown that patients who have severe sepsis, ICU mortality is more than 40%. If patients who did, don't have sepsis, in patients who don't have sepsis, the mortality is much less. So ICU can help if we find it out early and report to ICU early. So sepsis is a life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by a dysregulated host response to an infection. Why somebody can get it and somebody doesn't get it, we still do not know, but we should at least be able to find out. And there are very simple three things. Altered mental status. elderly don't neglect it. Respiratory rate fast. Adults with their respiratory rate that is disproportionately fast. It is as good as the patient is jogging marathon, you know. So respiratory rate should be observed, which we can all measure bedside. And hypotension, blood pressure, the shambhar chakhali cell, the perfusion problems, circulation problems, the lakshad gyal paije. Yaa teen pae ki doon points dhari disle common man la, tari hai lakshad gyal ki daha apla patient serious condition kade chale lahe. So it is very, very important that we reach such patient very early to a hospital. It is called as SOFA score. So what is done by taking this patient to ICU or to save lives in sepsis? Early identica identification and diagnosis is very important. Then early antibiotics and IV fluids. So these are very simple things that are being done, but for which we have to reach our patient to a medical scenario, medical facility very early. And then there, is, there are certain other warning signs which even a common person, school going child also can monitor. Thermometer kasa vaparaisa aplela sagrana mahit paije. Thermometer kake madhe kiwa tonda madhe vapru shakto. Heart rate kasa mozaiza. Pulse rate, pulse kashi bagaji hai aplela mahiti paije. Blood pressure chali automatic machines meta. Ti aplela sagrana vaparta ali paije. Shwaso chwasasa rate kiti a kaminita kiti wa shwaso chwas nitla zatwe. Te aplal mosta halapaije. Ari patient alert fully conscious ahe kinai. Ka confused ahe. 
का ड्राउजी आणि लिथार्जिक आहे उठायला नको म्हणतोय किंवा आपण हाक मारली तर बघत नाहीये चिमटा काढल्यावर सुद्धा हालचाल करत नाहीये का कशालाच रिस्पॉन्स नाही आणि कोमामध्ये आहे या सगळ्या गोष्टी आपल्याला बघता आल्या पाहिजेत आणि डॉक्टरला डिस्क्राईब करता आल्या पाहिजेत या खूप महत्वाच्या गोष्टी आहेत रिमेंबर सम स्मॉल इन्सिडेंट ऑर स्मॉल मॅनिफेस्टेशन दॅट अकर कॅन ओनली बी द टिप ऑफ द आईसबर्ग जसं काही सिंको चक्कर येणं इतर काहीतरी होत आहे का किंवा ट्रान्झियंटली चेस्ट पेन होऊन गेले डोंट टेक इट लाईटली ट्राय टू फाइंड आउट इफ अट ऑल देर इज एनिथिंग अंडरलाईन देर मे नॉट बी ऑल्सो अँड इफ इट इज नॉट देअर डोंट ब्लेम द डॉक्टर इफ इट इज नॉट देअर इट्स वेल अँड गुड बट वी हॅव टू चेक इट अँड कन्फर्म इट दॅट इट इज नॉट देअर सो वॉच फॉर द साइन्स अँड सिमटम्स अँड गेट युअर सेल्फ चेक वॉट इज डन इन द आय सी यू पुष्काळांना असं वाटतं की नको आय सी यू मध्ये जायला कशाला आय सी यू जायचं बट रिमेंबर आय सी यूज आर देअर टू सेव्ह लाईफ अँड आय हॅव लार्ज पूल ऑफ पेशंट हू हॅव कम आउट सक्सेसफुली फ्रॉम आय सी यू अँड हॅव नेव्हर रिक्वायर्ड एनी मेडिकल अटेन्शन इन फ्युचर अगेन एस्पेशली इन इंडिया वेअर द पॉप्युलेशन इज यंग अँड सम लाईफ सेटनिंग इव्हेंट अकर्स वी कॅन ऍक्च्युली टेक आउट दिस पेशंट आउट ऑफ दॅट इमर्जन्सी अँड दे कॅन हॅव फ्रुटफुल लाईफ from the point of view of nation as well so it actually gives you a second lease of life and icus can help you there is no doubt about it par apan icus cha yogya vapar kasa kela pahije yacha vichar karuya ek manje being prepared and do not deny jar garaj vatli icu janachi tar zarur jauya ekhada motha operation karaycha asel ani operation nantar patient la 24 tas observe karaycha icu yes we have to accept it it is to avoid emergency दुसऱ्या गोष्ट दुसरी गोष्ट काय पाहिली पाहिजे की ज्या काही आजारामुळे आपला पेशंट आजारी पडलाय त्याच्यामध्ये इम्प्रुव्हमेंट होण्याचे चान्सेस आहेत का नाहीत वेदर देर इज रिव्हर्सिबिलिटी ऑर नॉन रिव्हर्सिबिलिटी ऑफ द इलनेस बेस्ड ऑन दॅट ऑल्सो वी शुड डिसाईड टू युज द आय सी यूज वाईजली देर इज नो पॉइंट इन स्पेंडिंग ऑल ऑफ अ फॉर्च्युन ऑन आय सी यू ट्रीटमेंट इफ द अंडरलाईंग डिझीज इज इरिव्हर्सिबल सो वी हॅव टू युज अर कन्सेन्शियस कन्सेन्शियसनेस and use the scientific principles in discussion with the doctor how to choose a good icu is very important pushkar vela lok kay mantat ki nako nako javalcha icu gelela bar javalcha dawakhanat gelela bar that is not important what is important is what is the condition from which patient is suffering and where the best treatment for that disease is going to be offered that is how we have to choose a good icu so it is all our own responsibility as well to understand science that doesn't mean just to google and ask point blank questions to a doctor please remember that so understand science have a scientific attitude and also understand the limitations of science biological sciences still cannot make everybody immortal please remember that but we have to work within the limits to improve the quality of life and improve the fruitfulness of human life so life is very precious and don't miss the golden hour thank you that was awesome awesome great thank you stop sharing right so thank you so much ma'am for conducting such an eye opening session in fact uh, Uh, we do not know most of those things and many times we get confused exactly what to what to do in these kind of situations so it was really very uh, interesting and eye opening session i must say we have uh, a couple of questions uh, sent by our participants here the first question is by uh, mr ganesh singhre from tulani maritime institute and he asks can anyone from any background do the life saving courses is it possible yes it is possible in fact in other countries you can enroll yourself but i'm sure in maritime institute it must be available just as it is that uh, uh, people who are going on the ship i think it is one of the prerequisites to know the basic life uh, life uh, support system but we can actually make these courses available and we can teach basic life support to various people who are enthusiastic and willing to learn i think everybody should be very uh, familiar with these things absolutely yeah. there's no question about it yeah anything can happen at home also or your neighbor also any anybody can need it you know? 
the second question is from uh, Ankush Pawar, and he asks uh, how to reduce. Uh, he has written a Hindi word that is balgam. I think mm -hmm. that is sputum. Flame. Flame. Yes. 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 Okay. So I think uh, these personal questions we can take later, but there are simple things like uh, taking steam inhalation and gargling, which itself can help it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dr. Hema Mehta has asked an interesting question. She okay. says, uh, does irregularity in our routine uh, affect our health? Yes, definitely. Because there is something called as diurnal rhythm in the body. You must have heard that there was a Nobel Prize given to one of the biological uh, life science scientists, scientists who had uh, worked on understanding the circadian rhythm in the body. So there are so many things that are happening in our body which go according to day and night. Various hormones are secreted. Sleep is required for proper healing of the body. So all these things are very important. So occasionally, if you are straying, it is all right. But otherwise, most of the times, you should have a proper routine. Uh, Nitin from TSCL, he asks, what's the difference between heart attack and cardiac arrest? Heart attack means there is a part of the heart muscle is at uh, jeopardy or it is not receiving proper blood circulation and oxygen. Cardiac arrest means standstill of the heart. Heart is not functioning at all. Uh, Mr. Sangram Puhan from uh, DMI, he wants to ask, as a layman, uh, how do we distinguish between acidity and cardiac problem? See, acidity most of the times happens something related to your food habits. And there, there is a kind of burning, whereas chest pain because of heart is most of the times like compressing. People describe it as like an elephant standing on my chest or something like that, you know. But having said that, sometimes it is difficult to distinguish. So it is always better to err on the side of taking an easily or taking an opinion of the doctor for that. Dr. Rasmita Mohanty wants to ask, what is the what, or what are the causes of persistent giddiness and vertigo? There can be various causes. Giddiness is such an important symptom where you need to check various systems, right from starting from ear or inner ear. Hmm? or cervical spine to drop in blood pressure or very high blood pressure or very low sugar or very high sugar. There are so many other things and even including psychological problems. So it has to be assessed properly. There are various tests also for that. And then treat the particular underlying cause. Yeah. Dr. Srikant Madiwale from TMI uh, wants to ask a question. He says, uh, what are the basic requirement needed in an ideal ambulance? Mm, that is a very good question. An ideal ambulance is as good as an ICU uh, room on the wheels, ICU cabin on the wheels. So whatever is available in an ICU cabin should be available in an ambulance. Because anything can happen anywhere on the way, especially if you're transporting a seriously ill, unstable patient. So in other words, there has to be oxygen, availability of monitors, availability of artificial ventilation, and not only the equipment, the man or woman behind the machine is equally important. So a trained personnel, the nurses, even the ward boys, how to move the patient, like accident, if it has happened, and as I told you, that you have to protect the cervical spine of the patient. So you have to have ward boys or the attendants who know how to handle in such situations. And in current times, there has to be availability of the communication in an ambulance to the baseline hospital. Lakshmi Pandya from uh, TCC wants to ask, uh, is occasional uh, tremor in uh, speech, hand or leg normal? Yeah, it can be normal. It also depends on your stress level, if it is occasional. So Mayank Shah from TMI wants to ask, how physical exercise and normal walk should be done 
or regular daily uh, or regulated daily to avoid excess load of uh, excess load on heart right so most of the times what happens that we uh, we become gradually laid back and then something stimulates us and we suddenly start with a spur of action you know spur of the moment and we start excessive uh, exercise and where the heart and uh, rest of our system is not ready to bear that much of load and we have heard so many incidents in recent times that people otherwise hell and hearty go in the gym and then suddenly have cardiac arrest etc so it is important that you should gradually increase the level of exercise then exercise should be of various types it should not be only walking or only weight lifting or that there has to be flexibility and endurance and the cardiac endurance means muscle endurance and cardiac endurance so there has to be a combination of all these three different types of exercises in combination or in rotation over the week so it should not be um, like on 1st of january you suddenly started with 2 hours of exercise mm -hmm. with a new year resolution <laughs> good uh, we'll take two last questions ma'am uh, mr pratik tiwari wants to ask how can we understand relation between food and mind sorry say it again uh how can we understand the relation between food and mind food and mind okay yes. so i think we will have to have another lecture for that <laughs> and it is not only the relationship between food and mind but there is so much to be talked about mind and our health hmm and there is another question from uh, raman pv from tolani shipping he wants to ask uh, how important is it to complete the medication course uh, many a times after couple of days medication may become all right so it is very important that you complete the course of medication no doubt about it but i always tell my patients that blood pressure or diabetes is not like cough and cold that so many patients come to me after 3 months of initial prescription and say ha ah, apne to ek mahine ke liye likha tha to band kar diya so it is not that it you have to be in touch and in consultation with your doctor for what is to be done with the medications number of times it ha so happens that patients are from some village and or some other city and uh, the medical profession i mean the chemist calls whether i should give medications because it is the sixth consecutive month that the patient has come to get your prescription so in our country you know people misuse the prescriptions a lot so it is important that they should be in proper connection and communication with the medical practitioner their own doctor okay, thank you so much <laughs> for answering all those questions so patiently uh, <laughs> thank you so a uh, couple of comments if i may right uh, yeah. prachi uh, thank you very yeah. much i i you know you very nicely covered I, i think this whole golden hour thing was so important so important for everybody to hear that Absolutely. you know uh, whereas on one end you know clearly the idea is for all of you to be able to understand this concept of golden hour and intelligently use this information for yourselves and for your families and friends okay uh this is definitely something that all of you should understand but obviously this doesn't mean that um you would ever look at taking it to the other extreme that every little small small thing that happens that you can you think and you're scared that oh my god you know this is going to be an a heart attack or this is going to be a stroke uh you know you have to understand a little more and ensure that you are uh, appropriately uh, taking decisions so we should not be like a, pend a pendulum swinging but a uh, couple things that came to my mind as you were talking and as the questions came around mm -hmm. i think uh what i used to find very important during my what i call my past life in my medical days okay uh the best thing that any uh patient doctor relationship can you know can can that can happen and be created is for the patient to completely understand his or her illness true 
a well educated patient is probably the best thing to keep a patient out of hospital okay so i think all of you must be uh, very you know like and i'm i'm, I'm sorry to say it this way but there are times that many doctors feel that acha just unko tell them unko bolo bas ye dawai khao aur sab theek ho jayega why you are having that medicine what you are do, going to do with it etc etc that is your prerogative to ask the doctor to understand it is not good to be ignorant about your illness and just accept okay doctor ne bola ye 5 din ye goli khao aur bas finish okay you need to understand because you are the best person who can help your body if you don't understand your illness nobody can really help you to that extent so it is very important for you to take that responsibility on you i think this is really an important piece of patient education patient understanding of their illnesses yeah. and their body the second thing when you talked about this the you know the icu why should we go to icu should because there are a lot of people who are very scared of going to the icu a lot of people have conceptions about uh, artificial uh, measures to continue life things like ventilators things like uh, uh, intravenous <clears throat> fluids things like uh, feeding tube etc etc i think you made a very important point that if supposing somebody has irreversible diseases terminal cancers etc etc where you know that your outcome is not going to change overall that's one thing but otherwise in other situations where we are not dealing with any terminal illnesses and not dealing with any yeah. irreversible situations you know it it actually behooves everybody to make sure that they get treated with whatever today's technology allows us to treat people Yeah. and we have come a long way in the medical profession there is so much that can be done even if it means going on the ventilator you have a pneumonia you just need to have a support for four or five days and you can come off the ventilator and you can be back to normal as dr prachi already mentioned i think it's very important to understand where to draw the line because many people are very scared of this whole concept i don't want to receive any kind of artificial means of survival but there is a huge role for the for these artificial means of uh, treatment you know or, or support systems to the body uh, in situations which are reversible there is a huge role for that and uh, i think that is one thing uh, that people should also you know understand very very, very clearly yeah okay absolutely so, right but sometimes google is misleading please remember Very. that also whatever is said by google baba is everything not correct right right so try to develop a proper scientific attitude yes so rahul is uh, yeah. with that yeah, yeah, thank so. you so much mom for your valuable inputs uh, rajiv ma'am it was really very informative session and we have learned a lot of things and i sincerely hope that this is not the only session that we will have in fact this is just the beginning and we will have many more sessions from you and a lot of guidance okay. so that we can make ourselves aware and we can help ourselves in difficult situations i'd like to thank uh, dr sujatha naik tulani from bottom of my heart on behalf of uh, all the staff members tulani group and everybody for arranging this kind of uh, informative talk for all of us and taking care of us uh, thank you so much ma'am i'd thank also like to thank uh, mr uh, r kumar sir for attending the session yes. uh, and uh, i'd like to thank all the principals of uh, tcc tmi and chaitanya international school all the faculty members uh, office staff members and of course students for attending the session today thank you so much for uh, from uh, my side and uh, with this we'd like to stop the session over here thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you thank you so thank much thank you prachi thank you so thank much thank you this it was, was nice awesome. to be with tolani family thank you thank you. thank you yeah thank you bye Take wish care. you all a very happy and healthy new year and hopefully we come out of covid now <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you okay some, some day will happen 
it will happen. Yes. It will yes. happen. Yes, yes.